Well, now that I just finished the Deathstroke episode, uh, which you should definitely listen to because it was very good. <laughs> Unbiased opinion. Um, <laughs> uh, I figured I would reward myself and yourself with uh, a little shorter bonus video audio thing episode <laughs> um and we're gonna talk about the different metals and stuff because i know i've i've talked about a few uh, in recent videos and uh figured i'd cover some because they're i notice i see them in a lot of other things like uh, when i play injustice um etc you know and or like in Deathstroke, he has a, a certain kind of, like, sword. He has a Promethean blade. And so there's all these, like, metal, like, natural metal words that are sometimes unnatural metals that are, that appear a lot in DC stuff as, like, super hard metals, like adamantium in Marvel or X-Men, you know. Stuff like that. So I figured I'd cover a few, just because. Why not? Uh, so one of them is called Ninth Metal. It's like NTH Metal. And it's one of the, like, uh, you can see it in Injustice 2 as one of the costume options for every single character. And it's like a, a cool, like, very metallic, vibrant colored version of their normal outfit um and so ninth metal is found in the dc dark multiverse uh it's native to thanagar the home planet of katar hole shayera hole and shayera thal and among the unusual properties of ninth metal it's it has the ability to negate gravity it allows a person wearing an object such as like a belt made of ninth metal to be able to fly. In addition, ninth metal also protects the wearer from the elements and speeds. Uh, the healing of wounds increases their strength and protects them from like extremes and temperature. It's like super good stuff, like super good metal. Uh, it also it has many other properties that have yet to be revealed in full uh, to this date. Um, it's been implied that the apparently magical abilities of the Thanagarian supervillain, Omenar Sin, all stem from his unique mastery of the properties of Ninth Metal. Uh, these powers are augmented into a godlike level in the Ran versus Thanagar war, uh, when he builds himself an artificial body made of ninth metal. And in ancient Egypt, a Thanagarian spaceship made of ninth metal crash landed uh, to be discovered by Prince Khufu and his betrothed, Cheara. Uh, exposure to ninth metal forced Khufu and Cheara into a cycle of reincarnation. In the 20th century, they were incarnated as Carter Hall and Shiera Saunders, the original Hawkman and Hawk Girl. As Hawkman and Hawk Girl, they wore ninth metal belts made with the help of Thanagarian Paran Katar, father of Katar Hall, uh, when he was visiting Earth. Many years later, Carter and Shiera's son, Hector Hall, made a suit of armor made of ninth metal and took the name Silver Scarab as a founding member of Infinity Inc. The suit provided him with protection from attacks, allowed him to fly, and to project solar energy blasts, and let him lift giant weights, you know, super strength. Uh, the current Hawkman and Hawk Girl continue to wear ninth metal, and Deathstroke once had a ninth metal suit in the New 52 series. Um, members of the Legion of Superheroes wear flight rings made of an alloy of ninth metal called Valorium. Uh, 
in some other publishings, Ninth Metal has the capability to destabilize magic because uh, magic is canon to the DC universe. That's where you get Shazam and Black Adam and all of them. They use magic. Um, and it's mainly utilized by Thanagarians in the JLU continuity, but has been used by both Batman and Green Arrow against their more supernatural foes. Cause they're the ones that mainly deal with the magic people. Um, in recent publishing, the mysterious ninth metal is treated as a sentient, well, semi-sentient like thing uh, with mystical properties of its own, retaining many of its previous effects in its initial continuity. Ninth metal seems to have inherited effects from its animated showing as well because it's it's been shown in animated uh, like depictions of different like arcs and stuff like different justice league shows and things like that um guitar hole having used it to negate the intangibility of an army of evil spirits when battling gentleman ghost uh, a couple of unique attributes the alloy has is creating and sharing a symbiotic link with whomever it bonds itself to. So not only healing and regenerating destroyed anatomy, but restoring long thought lost attributes of the wielder in its unadulterated form. In the case of Hall, uh, the metal regrew his wings because he had wings, uh, a trait lost to all Thanagarians due to a great viral epidemic within their later generations. Uh, it also has an anti-healing factor to it in that it can prevent regenerative and or replicative capacities from procreating new tissue. The metal moves and reacts whenever the host is in danger, creating and reinforcing protective liquid metal armor, which shapes and forms into various weaponry. It also morphs itself around to protect the wearer from assaults. They normally can't like dodge in time. Uh, experienced users can even manipulate it in more creative ways, like enhancing one's own powers and abilities, or even creating ranged weaponry capable of hitting things as tough as Kryptonians, uh, Daxamites, and Martians, like things that you just can't hit like that. Um, like a super, super weapon to armor thing. Uh, Ninth Metal shares an attunement with the Dark Multiverse, home of Barbados and his army of nightmares. It fuses with kind of like alternates the ones to utilize its sub his substance in order to uh, give super natural powers onto the wielders by bending the rules of physics to do it. Um, due to its, you know, unique property to channel its dark energy, uh, the people of the dark multiverse are also vulnerable to the ninth metal being one of the few things that can hurt Barbados, the dark nights and the vast group of horrors waiting out in the dark dimensions below creation due to their odd natural state of physics, making them immune to whatever effects inflicted upon them by the previous multiverse and its people. So it's a very, when it gets brought up, it's a very cool thing. Or when you see, like, if you're watching a DC show and, like, armor, like, morphs around their body to, like, block something from them, they're probably using ninth metal. And they won't explain it. And it's, you'll just think it's part of their superpower, but it's just, like, this metal. Um, and that's what also gives the Hawkman and Hawkgirl the ability to fly and all, that's all kinds of stuff. Um then we have some lesser, I mean, Ninth Metal is definitely the coolest one. I'm not going to lie. Um, the next ones we got are just kind of fun to know. We have uh, Amazonium. 
when uh, when Wonder Woman first hit the shelves in 1941, uh, the uh, like All Star Comics number eight. Um, she came along with a lot of cool toys. She had an invisible plane, a magic lasso that like forces people to tell the truth, and mystical bracelets called the bracelets of submission. And uh, <laughs> right, like <laughs> she has a whip and bracelets of submission. <laughs> uh, uh, the the bracelets are what we'll be focusing on, though. <laughs> Because they're made of a really strong metal called Amazonium. And up until Wonder Woman number 52 uh, in 1952, it was never explained what the bracelets were made of. But in that issue, they first revealed Amazonium. Amazonium is an indestructible metal from her home island that was made stronger by a spell from Aphrodite. And let her bracelets repel everything from bullets to energy blasts. The only things that could damage it were magical weapons. And while Amazonian sounds pretty awesome, it ceased to exist in post-crisis continuity, and now her bracelets are made of an unknown but powerful metal. So they're no longer made of Amazonium. But anything kind of pre-crisis um, does not, not super long ago. <laughs> um but anything pre that it was Amazonium, and now it's just not. Um, so the next is Promethium, which is we just heard about in the Slade or Deathstroke episode. And uh, it's really, really, really strong. Uh, in 1981, the new Teen Titans number nine introduced the metal called Promethium which was first created by Steve Dayton, the stepfather of the teen Titan uh, changeling named after the Greek myth about a man who gave fire to men and was cursed for eternity. Prometheum is more than just indestructible. It can also give off limitless energy as a power source. Um, and it comes in two flavors, depleted and volatile. Depleted Prometheum was used in the cybernetic parts for the superhero Cyborg, giving him incredible durability that even Superman couldn't break. And volatile Prometheum can be used as a power source or like a bomb big enough to destroy the universe. But it has side effects of mutating everyone around it, so it's not something you want to make a suit out of, unless you have healing like Deathstroke who has his suit made out of Prometheum and his, like, the staple sword, like his classic sword he always carries is made out of Prometheum. Uh, makes it very, very strong, right? And, like, Cyborg is... That's why he's so strong and can do all the things that he can do because he has... His whole body's made of Prometheum. Um, so then, like another superhero named metal, we have Supermanium, which, uh, you might be able to guess which superhero made it. <laughs> You're such a good guesser. Uh, yeah, it was Superman, of course. Uh, made Supermanium back in 1949. And uh, in the story of World's Finest, number 41, he like a, a group of people saved by Superman got him to use his bare hands to make a new metal from a super tough ore, and he called it Supermanium. So he, he like made it himself. So he just like crushed a bunch of stuff together and matter and stuff and made it. But the idea of a metal that only Superman could bend came in handy. The new element, Supermanium, showed up later on a Superman comic, and its origin changed to a metal Superman forged in the heart of a sun. Its most famous uses were for Superman's indestructible supermobile, for when he loses his powers or when the 
toy company needs to sell toy cars. Um, and the gigantic door and key that protected his fortress of solitude. Uh, that's all made of supermanium. And so supermanium was also a metal the Man of Steel would use to make prisons for Brainiac and Lex Luthor. But supermanium hasn't come back since 1985's Crisis on Infinite Earths. That was the last time, much like the Amazonium. Then we have Marvellium. Uh, it's uh, one of the least well-known on my list of metals, but uh, Marvellium goes all the way back to the Captain Marvel Adventures number 100 uh, back in 1949. In the story, Captain Marvel's archenemy and mad scientist, Dr. Savannah, went back in time to steal the mystic bracelet of the wizard Shazam, making himself a ghost who Captain Marvel couldn't touch. So he went back to create a series of evil clones to fight him. And so Captain Marvel created a, the new metal Marvellium. He, he says Marvellium is one of the world's strongest metals, so strong that only Captain Marvel himself can mold and shape it. It's also impenetrable, even to mystic beings, because in that clique of heroes and villains, they use magic. So like Sam's magic, Captain Marvel's magic, they're all like the magic guys. Um, Captain Marvel shaped it into a prison cell and tricked Savannah into it, keeping him from leaving. Uh, it's more of a like a plot device metal, but it's still called super strong in the story. So I I included it because it, it comes up and stuff like that as a super strong created metal in the DC universe. And then last but not least, we have Inertron uh, in Action Comics number 336. Uh, they introduced Inertron into the DC universe in 1965, uh, which is said to be the strongest metal in the 30th century. Uh, while fighting the supervillain Starfinger, uh, Brainiac 5 decided to make shields for the Legion of Superheroes out of Inertron and said it was strong enough to stand up to a nuclear explosion. The funny thing is that even though it's said to be indestructible, it's been broken lots of times. Uh, it's another trait of the so-called indestructible metals every time. <laughs> but uh, Kryptonians like Superboy and Daxamites like mon -El have been able to break pure Inertron. Even though reinforced Inertron stopped Superboy once, but yeah, whatever. Uh, Matter Eater Lad uh, once ate some of it too. So even well, even Karate Kid was able to break shackles made of Inertron. It's a metal that's that's not all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> so, so either they don't have really strong metals in the 30th century, or Brainiac Five was talking up Inertron a little too much. Uh, but yeah, that's that's uh, some of the kind of. Uh, just like little Easter eggy bits that, you know, just I find interesting when I'm like playing a game and they bring up ninth metal or they bring up Prometheum, like cool stuff like that. That's just like, oh, it's like a little Easter egg thing that they, I mean, they don't like have to include, but they just do because it's part of the lore and everything. So it's kind of neat. So, yeah, I might do some more bonus things like this, just of little Easter eggy bits of that you might. There's a few things where it's like if you watch a movie that has certain things in it, they, it might just be, it might just look like nothing, like it, just like a line in the movie, but it might be like something that's in every single comic of this character every time, and they just like toss it in there to have, you know, people that have read all the comics know it. Um, like, the Wonder Woman ice cream thing. But that's a story for a different episode. 